to referencing myself, which I seem to be doing more and more these days, which is a good thing because knowledge compounds and you should advance with your increase of knowledge. You shouldn't just throw everything out and then relearn something and then relearn this and learn a new thing and then be a jack of all trades and not know anything. Uh, science builds upon one another. So you learn about you know, the beginnings of electricity and then you start installing electrical outlets. The, you know, you start uh, learning about the distillation process of sugar and how it took like forever to be able to do it. And in fact, in America, we don't even use sugar in most of our products. We use corn syrup, high fructose, um, high fructose corn syrup. And so we're actually using corn. We're using corn in order to sweeten our stuff. Um, the sugar that we get, most of it's imported. But in order to uh, dry it out and just have the grains that we have, it was a really complicated process that killed a lot of slaves. And there was actually, I think it was an ex-slave that made a, an easier process for that. Regardless, knowledge compounds. I don't need to tell you, you know this. Of course, you know, you're smart. It's like algebra, right? You can't do algebra 2 till you do algebra 1. You can't learn how to multiply until you learn how to add and subtract. So it's sort of like that, right? That's how knowledge is. You should build it up and, you know, uh, just strengthen it and make it stronger. Uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes you could just zone out and you could just kind of check out, you know, if you're watching a movie or if you're sitting in a boring ass class and you don't learn a fucking thing, you don't listen to any fucking thing, and then you have to study really fucking hard extra afterwards in order to try to learn something. You cram all the shit the night before, you do the damn test, and then you forget about it as soon as you do it. You're not learning knowledge, you're not learning networking, fucking school is a waste of fucking time. It's only there to oppress and molest, it's there to fuck you over. Um, it's not there to make you stronger. I have no relationships with any of the teachers that I've had throughout my entire years. I have a few relationships, but I would say for the majority of them, the teachers didn't give a shit. They didn't care if I succeeded, if I failed in life. They didn't give a fuck. They only want to uh, control their little fucking mini tyranny while we were there. Tell us to shut up, sit down, and that was it. School's a fucking waste of time. Get rid of the fucking school education system. It's teaching totalitarian fascism, and it's teaching blind obedience to arbitrary authority. Um, it's brainwashing, and it's brainwashing to make your kid weak, and it's brainwashing to make your children maintain the status quo so they don't actually advance in socioeconomic uh, positions. Um, if you go back to the Native Americans, Native Americans only lived to be about 18, 20 something years old. If you go to the Indian Knoll site on the Green River in Kentucky, they only lived to be about 18 to 20 years old. So if you was to put them through school, they would only have two years if they didn't die early, right, at 18. They would only have two years up until 20 in order to do something with themselves. Okay, you graduated. What are you going to do now? Well, I'm going to go to college. Well, that's probably not a good idea. You probably won't make it. You know, why don't you uh, do something? I want to be president. Ooh, senator? Ah, House of Representatives. There you go. There you go. That's what you That's what you need to do. Be a House of Representatives. You got two years to make your mark. So do it to it. Senator fucking takes six years, you know, 36 years, motherfuckers, who the fuck would uh, elect a dictator? Hey, you're a dictator? Hey, you've been in politics forever. I like you, politics, and I'm going to vote for you. I know we the poorest state in the union, but we're going to vote for the richest motherfucking senator out there because hopefully his, when he's eating all the food at the table, you know, some of the scraps will come down and we can scrape those scraps up and, and, and put it in a pile. And, um, you know, maybe maybe use it for crust or something for some peanut butter pie. <laughs> uh, so I was going to do this actually on the Lanapoda, but it's going to be about Captain Pipe. This little sort of um, screen recording uh, videos that I've been having a ton of fun making. The, uh, uh, the Lanapoda, okay, so the Lanapoda is just the name of a tribe, but there's no information at all about them, but I've seen their name pop up several times. Usually it's in a poem or it's mentioned, you know, of the Native Americans that were um, in Kentucky. So here's the poem. The poem is, in the beginning, let's see. In the beginning I was here long before the white man and his diseases, his religions and his warlike ways. I lived upon the land for countless moons in harmony with the great spirit, honoring all life around me. In this land called Kentucky, the great meadow, the dark and bloody ground, I was known as Shawnee. I was also known by other names, Cherokee, Chickasaw, Iroquois, Lanapota, Creek. I am Native American, the indigenous tribes of this land. So that's, uh, that's a poem I've seen several times over and over again. So they're sitting there talking about 
just Native Americans in Kentucky in general. They were known as the Shawnee. The Shawnee in Kentucky are synonymous. Shawnee was all over the place. They had lots of permanent villages. So the Shawnee we know existed here. Probably was the Indian Null sites. The Indian Null sites probably Shawnee, Cherokee, or Uchi. Or some other tribe we haven't even came across yet. But the Lanapoto, I don't know where they're at. I don't know where they settled. I don't know where they were. The Mazopalia, I learned, um, settled at the, at the mouth of the Cumberland River, which was known as the Shawnee River. So the Cumberland River, which, you know, the, it dips down into Tennessee and kind of comes back up to Kentucky, that, um, the, that, that was Shawnee River. That was the River of the Shawnee. So that would have been Tecumseh's, Puxinwa's River. But now we got some fucking, you know, uh, Anglican, English fucking butcher. He fucking killed a lot of Irish people. The Duke of Cumberland murdered a lot of fucking Irish people. So we named a river after him to, you know, symbolize the Irish blood that had to be pushed into the rivers, right? All that uh, blood, you know, it's it was a Shawnee River, but the Iroquois, you know, the fucking Irish, who gives a shit? Let's just honor our butchers. So the Duke of Cumberland was a fucking piece of shit butcher and um, almost want to fucking look him up a little bit more because I've forgotten. Um, we'll get back to him. Um, I've forgotten like the, the his fucking crimes. I know that he killed a lot of people in the um, in Ireland. And so he is a genocidal fucking maniac. He's a duke, right? So that just means he was born and into royalty. He just takes royalty and goes on, you know, oh, I'm I'm important. Look at me, Prince William, Duke of Cumberland. That's probably him. They named it after him. It was one of the first surveyors, actually. One of the sur first surveyors that were walking around. There was, like, the, the, the Thomas Walker survey, and then there was the Christopher Gist survey. So these white people walking all around naming shit. That's going to be, that's going to be Pumpkin Land. No, that's going to be Batman Forever Zone. Really? Really? That's the name? Really? 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 That's the name you're going to go with? That's the name? That is so ridiculous, it's so funny if it wasn't sad. <laughs> yeah, so his English Tory opponents named Duke of Cumberland, Butcher Cumberland. So old Butcher Cumberland, right? Oh yeah, let's name a fucking river after old Butcher Cumberland. Yeah, Butcher Cumberland, he killed lots of people. Let's name a goddamn fucking river after him and name it forever. Sometimes I think people's names live into antiquity just because they got such a cool fucking name. There's a there's still a city named Canterbury. I thought there was like the Archduke of Canterbury or something that happened in history. Something of Canterbury. And it, the Canterbury Tales, right? You got that old fictional book of a bunch of tales and shit. It's a real place. Canterbury's a real place. Duke of Cumberland, that's a real title. And that's what these fucking, you know, um, uh, royalists was all about. Getting the most powerful name. Having 50 fucking names, 50 fucking titles, and then hopefully antiquity would still remember them based upon something. Well, you don't remember Prince William? Do you remember the Duke of Cumberland at least? I do. I did remember the Duke of Cumberland. I forgot who the fuck you were though, Prince William. So Prince William Augustus. The third and youngest of George II of Great Britain, Carolina Van Bosch. We'll get back to Captain Pipe here in a second. Um, we're going to find out why, why was he called Butcher Cumberland? Why was he called Butcher Cumberland? Uh, the Battle of Culloden. Okay, he is generally best remembered for his role in putting down the, Jaca the, Jacobite, the Jacobite rising at the Battle of Culloden in 1746. So that's the reason why he got Butcher Cumberland because of the Battle of Culloden, right? Look at him, he's fat, he's overweight, he's got all these damn fucking rags, acting like he's way better, fucking stockings, that fat fucker, he's got like them thighs that rub together, and then he also had those little white buckled shoes, those little pretty shoes, with the pretty white stockings, old Duke of Cumberland, you're just so adorable, yes you are, it's kind of like that, uh, the King Louis statue, King Louis XVI, he's just like, I am a monarch, please, uh, bow down to me, and he's fat and fucking gross, and it's like, is that supposed to be a powerful stance, the, the way you're standing there? Is that, is that supposed to fucking just, you know, make people just tremble with fright? You know, the power of the king. Whoa, look at the power of the king. He stood. He had to have stood for like an hour when they made that painting of him. Man, that must have been hard standing in his own house, in his own room, around with all of his guards just standing while people painted him. That was, that was probably, whoa, tough. 
tough, tough, tough. The Battle of Kolobin is uh, on 16th April, 16, 1746. The Jacobite forces of Charles Edwin Stewart fought loyalist troops commanded by William Augustus, Duke of Cumberland, near the Ivernus in the Scottish Highlands. So he was, he was killing Scots. Who was he killing? Jacobites. What's a Jacobite? Well, we're going to read about the Jacobite rising. Um, let's go to the ending of it. What happened at the end? So the legacy or the casualties, British army. Why do we only care about the British army casualties? Is that, I guess he's leading the British army. It's all about the damn British, isn't it? Here's like some shit of where you could find it. If you want to learn more about the Battle of Collodin, just take a look at G.A. Hensey's Bonnie Prince Charlie, A Tale of Fauninoit and Collodin. <laughs> um, just what the fuck happened? What the fuck was the end? Did people die? Let's just go look at this box up here, man. I got, they're going to make me read all that. Okay. It says 50 were killed. The Duke of Cumberland, only 50 were killed. 259 were wounded. Not bad, right? The Duke of Cumberland did pretty well. But the Jacobites, wow, 2,000 of them fucking dead. And then 154 of them captured. And then in France, they got captured there too. So the, 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 they're fighting in the Highlands in Great Britain. And there's French troops there too. But way... Clearly, it's asymmetrical warfare, decisive government victory. The Jacobite rebellion collapses, so they fucking kill the Jacobites. And the Jacobites, they were just a peace-loving people, right? All they wanted was Charles Edward Stewart to re regain the British throne for the exiled House of Stewart, which, okay, that, that seems less um, exciting there, you know. Why did they like him so much? Who is this man? Oh, this is getting complicated. Man, European history is complicated as shit. This, these people were pretending to have a bunch of power, and then they tricked these fucking mercenaries, and then these mercenaries killed these people, which had nothing to do with anything, and then they were powerful, and then they won power, and then they got power, they lost power, this person's dead, everybody's happy, who gives a shit? Welcome to European fucking history. So, the Duke of Cumberland, fucking Butcher Cumberland, right? That's the Shawnee River. They have uh, a mention of the Lanapoda. I already pointed out the uh, the poem, right? We, I've been also known by other names, Cherokee, Chickasaw, Iroquois, Lanapoda Creek. This is all Kentucky Native Americans, okay? So I've recognized the Chickasaw there in the western part of Kentucky. Cherokee was on the Green River in the Appalachia. The Iroquois. The Iroquois were actually in New York, and but there was like the Beaver Wars, and supposedly they had influence all the way into Kentucky. So the Iroquois, I think Kentucky is an Iroquois name if you go with the great meadow but dark and bloody ground i think is something else and it could be the river the bloody river of kentucky why is kentucky a bloody river because that's where lots of fucking people died right there on the kentucky river and it goes through Carrollton. Carrollton, you know i lived in gallup county so Carrollton was right there below me and so that's where the start of the kentucky river goes and then it comes all the way down and kind of cuts through the state um i think it gets to lexington or north of lexington over there but it's not the Licking River, and it's not the Green River, and it's not the Cumberland River. I'm getting to know my rivers in Kentucky, so congratulate me, everybody. Go ahead. I can hear you. Thank you. Okay, so the native people of America are how the European invaders totally destroyed in five centuries the most pristine con continent on planet Earth, right? White people destroyed the fucking continent. It was all about progress right fucking polluting the air destroying killing everybody that's progress for the uh the white man simon gertie a white man who was actually one of my favorite fucking people in the world fought for captain pipe a delaware chief cap simon gertie uh, fought for the indians because he was sickened by the atrocities being perpetuated by the european colonists both the british and the americans and um, according to some early maps, the Uchi had a town in Kentucky on a river which appears to be identical with the Green River. I've seen that exact same sentence, too. A river which appears to be identical with the Green River. Just, it's the Green River. Come on. Other Indians who claim Kentucky as their homeland are the Delaware, Lanapota Creek, and the Mingo. The Mingo. The Mingo were the fallen um, Mohawks, I thought. But I've also heard some of the Mingo being fallen Seneca. The Mingo was Johnny Logan. And the Mingo was uh, Chief Plucky. 
Chief Plucky Minotee, who got murdered in Georgetown, got killed in Georgetown on the Christmas Day Parade. You had uh, George Washington, who was sailing across the Delaware River, right, going to attack some damn Hessians who were sleeping during Christmas. Germans, we all know fucking Germans are celebrating Christmas. Dumbass fucking Catholic fucking German motherfuckers, right? So George Washington said, fuck your Christmas, right? You want to talk about declaring a war on Christmas? Fucking George Washington, he declared the fucking first war on Christmas, sitting there murdering people on Christmas fucking day, but he's considered a military genius, right? Oh, wow, so goddamn smart. When everybody's trying to fucking pray to their God, you're fucking murdering them as they're fucking praying. So we know Washington, he's a he's not Christian by any... He might have said that he was a Christian, but give me a fucking break. Motherfucker can't kill all the people that George Washington killed and still, still say he was of, like, Jesus Christ. No fucking way. But I think that's a, that's a good point by me, by saying that George Washington was the first. You also had uh, Otto Van Bismarck who declared war on Christmas, and you had the Puritans, uh, the Pilgrim Puritans who declared war on Christmas. They find it, you know. So if you had a, if you had a Christmas tree or were celebrating Christmas by not working, the Puritans would fucking fine you a hundred fucking dollars. So the Puritans had a war on Christmas. Otto Van Bismarck during the Coulter Comp had a war on the Catholic Church um, in general. You know, uh, Christmas kind of is, um, I guess, uh, a secondary to his war on the Catholic Church. And then, um, the then we have George Washington who declared war on Christmas Day when he fucking you know attacked the Haitians um, on on the Battle of Trenton and won right. But anyways, that was 1776. 1776, the year of the Declaration of Independence. At the end of that year, that's when the um, the uh, George Washington on the Delaware. There's that famous picture Washington standing all you know gallantly on the on the boat. Because that's how people ride boats, right? As if somebody's taking a picture of them. He's probably all stumped up and, you know, all cowering and all scared and shit. But nah, he's, he's the hero. He's the father of the country. All his positions were just so fucking heroic, right? He killed him and then stood so gallantly. It's a boat. And it seemed like a rickety boat. And frankly, with him standing up at the front there, that would make it wobbly. He would have been, he would have fell out, splashed in the river. Everybody would have known. No, he was ducked down and just trying to be quiet as they were going along. You know, come on, give me a break. You know, be serious for a change. So Simon Gertie fought for the Indians because he was sickened by the atrocities being perpetuated by the European colonists. According to some early maps, the Uchi had a town in Kentucky on a river which appears to be identical with the Green River. I already mentioned that. Also, the other people that mentioned that they had a homeland here were the Delaware, which was, I don't know if that was new or, or different from the poem that I just read. But the Delaware, I've heard, but the Mingo was definitely a new thing. The Creek was the same, and the Lanapoto was the same. The Delaware are just like the Shawnee. Kentucky and Shawnee. Kentucky is Shawnee, okay? Shawnee were every fucking place in, in, in Kentucky. Now, the other tribes, Cherokee, Uchi, Chickasaw, I know were here, but the other ones are kind of intermittently everywhere, nowhere. The Mingo, they had Chief Plug, he had died. And so if you die on this land, this is your land too. This is your final resting place. So for Chief Plucky, who is a, a Mingo chief, you know, um, Godspeed, uh, young blood. So he died in Georgetown, right? So he had a Christmas Day parade the same day that George Washington had a parade. And he was able to kill several of the enemies um, Chief Plucky was, but eventually he got killed. They caught up with him and they shot him. But he did kill, like, the chief or the leader of the settlers. They were trying to settle on their land, sort of like how the Israelis tried to do on Palestinian land. But Chief Plucky wasn't having none of that. So he got a band of probably about 15 or so and, and, and killed a lot of people, but then eventually wound up dying himself. So I know Chief Plucky, it was kind of a sad story. But he died the, the, on Christmas Day, 1776. So when you're thinking about George Washington crossing the Delaware, I want you to think about G Chief Plucky coming all the way down from Ohio, marching with 15 motherfuckers and coming down. And he was like, he attacked two villages before he wound up dying. So he, he uh, inflicted some damage. But he wound up losing. So we can actually see the two trajectories, right, kind of crossing. You both have Christmas Day parades, uh, 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 military campaigns, but one of them, the uh, George Washington's people, he was successful, whereas Chief Plucky's people was not. Uh, also, on a note this, in Kentucky, the Revolutionary War, there was an Eastern Theater and a Western Theater. And in the Western Theater, it was more about murdering Native Americans. It, it, there was hardly any British around. There was more French than there was British. And even Daniel Boone and a lot of the white people who first started colonizing Kentucky considered themselves British. And actually, when Kentucky was formed, they considered joining up with the French-Spanish Empire, you know, joining up with a different empire besides 
British Empire or the American colonies. They were going to, you know, form part of these other motherfuckers. And um, they were going to do it because they were going to be their own independent thing. And they didn't think that the uh, American colonists actually would have treated them right. So there was the Spanish conspiracy where you actually had the, uh, the government of Kentucky seriously considering becoming a part of the Spanish Empire. If that would have happened, if Kentucky would have gone to become the Spanish Empire, we'd all be speaking Spanish. And we would sit there and talk on the phone and we'd be like, oh my God, I can't believe this, right? In Spanish language, however that sounds. Que pasa, mi amigo? But you have um, on the phone, you know, it'd be like, push one for Spanish, push two for English. And it'd be like, ah, oh, God damn it, gotta push two for fucking English. I gotta do all this extra labor. I'm so sick and tired of these English colonists, these English speaking fucking colonialists coming into my fucking country, into my land, and taking my jobs. And now I gotta push two on a phone? Oh, come on, that's not a real fucking problem. Why the fuck y'all argue about that shit? That's not a real fucking problem. Come on. Come on, let's get serious. So. Is this silly season? Is it silly season right now? Come on. Come on. We need to get serious right now. Does Kirk Cameron have let's, uh, let's save Christmas? Is Kirk Cameron going around saying that Christmas was stolen not from the pagans but from the Christians? The pagans stole the Christians? Is that what Kirk Cameron is saying? Come on. That's, that's fucking hogwash. You know, you know, when that day happens, then, you know, good, good night, Mary. You know, goodbye, Uncle Tom, when that shit happens. I never would believe... Kirk Cameron, he was like the bad kid, right? Or no, Leonardo DiCaprio was the bad kid in Family um, Growing Pains. But, you know, maybe maybe what's made for TV, the family that's made for television, isn't really the television family that that is real. You know, maybe there's... Okay, I'm going totally into Netherlands over there. Netherlands, actually, which is where my ancestors w grew up. The Netherlands literally means the lowlands in the uh, Westphalia. They uh, they spoke Platzdeutsch, uh, Platzdeutsch, which is Lower German. And it's not lower as inferior, even though that's the way it's interpreted, I bet. But it's Lower German because it was the lower lands. It was the Germans spoken in the lower lands. Netherlands is the lowlands. So the lowlands are actually right next to each other. It's probably not even 50 miles you know, probably just a one day on horseback, you could have got to um, um, the capital city of uh, Netherlands, Brussels. So, you know, that's a little bit about me, about my German ancestry. So, Captain Pipe. So, this whole thing is about Captain Pipe. And 22 minutes in, we're going to get to Captain Pipe, okay? So, <laughs> I will put this in the, in the comments. If you want to start listening about Captain Pipe, go in the 20. 22 minutes and um, go to 23 minutes okay so Captain Pipe this is this is actually really exciting for me okay so the Delaware they were the grandfathers they were the uncles of the Shawnee so they the Delaware tribe was known as being a tribe that the Shawnee tribe had eventually descended from they're both speaking Algonquin so this is this is fascinating because who was the original tribe the Af or, uh, Native Americans have been in the Americas for nearly 14,000 years. In Kentucky for at least that much. When they could have been here longer in you know, Alaska or in South America when they first landed on their boats. Because not everybody believes that theory about them crossing over the land bridge or is it a, an ice bridge? Which one is it? The, it all froze over and they walk over the frozen you know, tundra or it dried up and they walked on the, on the dirt. You know, you, People can't even make minds up with that. Where did the dinosaurs go? Was it a big comet that blew everything up? I even heard it was like a big gamma ray. A big gamma ray just fucking electrocuted everybody and then everybody was dead. I'm like, shit, man. That's like worse than a tornado. A tornado or a lightning strike could just drop right on top of your head and then you're gone. Uh, but a gamma ray? How the fuck do you defend yourself against a gamma ray? You know, even if you had a bomb shelter, like, you know, deeper than Hitler's fort, you, you would you would get caught. You would get, you know, they would find you out. So Captain Pipe is a great man. I like Captain Pipe. Simon Gertie fought with Captain Pipe. I knew Captain Pipe, and you, my sir, are no Captain Pipe. All right, so Captain Pipe is a badass, right? He's a Lenape. He's a Delaware. The Shawnee consider the Delaware their either their grandfathers or their uncles. So it's like they're male sort of, um, you know, their their brethren or whatever, but they're related to them. So they believe that the tribe actually came up from them. So the Delaware, I think we can infer logically from that that the Delaware tribe is an older tribe than the Shawnee, and that the Shawnee was a tribe that had broken away from the Delaware. 
uh, but still kept close ties to them. When did that happen? We don't know. That would be another fascinating time to find out, right? The Delaware. Delaware, Delaware. And a Shawnee breakup. When did, when did y'all break up? Y'all ain't going out no more? What happened? Delaware is also known as the Lenape. Lenape is what they're actually called, so we should call them the Lenape. Delaware is easier to remember because of the state, but Lenape, I just hope I'm saying it right, but Lenape is um, is is the, the actual Delaware tribe. That's what they call themselves, their auto name, which is what we should call them too. We should respect what people call themselves. Like the Winnebago's. They're the Ho-Chunks. If you call them the Winnebago's, you're a fucking racist. Call them people the stinking creeks, you fucking racist piece of shit. The stink people, the stinking creeks. That's what you think of the fucking ho chunk people, bunch of stinky people. That's racist and it's rude and it's disrespectful. Now Oklahoma, this is an interesting case. It means red people, and there is a lot of Native Americans in Oklahoma. So Oklahoma literally translates to red people, and you got the entire debate with the redskins. So I wonder if that's just Native Americans' way of trying to, you know, say something, even though what they really want to say is, why did you genocide and murder all of us? How come we're all fucking poor? Give us a fucking chance. Let us raise weed on the fucking reservations. Let us grow pots. What the fuck? This is our own land. This is our own country. If we raise this shit, is the federal government just going to use reasons to start shooting at us? Then Len Leonard Peltier is going to fucking shoot back and go to fucking prison? Now, haven't y'all genocided enough? Aren't you about done? I heard uh, Johnny Depp is actually trying to buy some of the uh, uh, wounded knee land, right? The, the battle of wounded knee when that happened. And that's fascinating because that's actually like the end of the Native American battle, supposedly, right? That was the biggest battle, the last one or some shit. There's a bunch of actually battles in the West, um, which I'm not as familiar with. I'm kind of biased towards the Native Americans that were here in the state of Kentucky. Kentucky does, is a Native American name, just like half of the states in the United States, right? Mississippi, Alabama, fucking Native Americans, every which one of them is Native American lands, right? Or Native American names. Um, Oklahoma, right, we just uh, uh, went through that, and, you know, there's uh, over half of them, over 25 plus Native American, or uh, American states are named for Native American words, so if that's not telling right there, that's actually really wonderful, because a lot of times, uh, the conquerors have this thing where they conquer another people's land, and then put their own name on it, like Plymouth, that was the, the Patuxics, the, the Patuxic lands, that's where the Patuxic live, but now they call it Plymouth, just like uh, um, Clay County, or no, not Clay County. I'm sure that is too, but the uh, Clark County. Clark County, William Rogers Clark, or George Rogers Clark, who fucking killed all the Native Americans. Shawnee, Miami, got like, you know, millions of fucking Shawnee scalps. There's a county that's named after him in Kentucky, and that county is in the same location as the last Shawnee village. The Skipikithiki is the last Shawnee village. Also, Anwani and Shinoa. So these are the three permanent Shawnee villages. Just a happy hunting ground. Why they got permanent fucking villages if it's just a happy hunting ground? You know, back in the day, you couldn't just vacation to fucking Kentucky for a day, kill a bunch of fucking deer, and then drive on back home. They were Native Americans. They're on foot. Even if they're on horseback, they got to carry all that stuff back. Just a happy hunting ground. Bullshit, you white racist apologist piece of shit. You're ignoring the Native Americans that were all here, all the artifacts, and frankly, archaeology knows about the truth of the Native Americans in Kentucky and history. Uh, historians need to catch up with them. So Captain Pipe. Who is Captain Pipe? Well, we've, uh, we've uh, established that he's part of the Lenape, and he's a member of the Wolf Clan. And that's really cool. That's, uh, they named themselves after a lot of animals. So, you know, there's the elk, and there's maybe mastodons, there's bears, there's um, bison. There's a lot of big animals that was in, you know, um, Native America times. And, um, and so the wolf clan, there are wolves there. There's actually even uh, Indian Knoll, they had dogs. They had pet dogs. Four, five thousand years ago, Native Americans had pet dogs. They also had marriages and weddings. They had some social class, some social structure. Um, they ate well, right? They had this uh, pile of trash, which they just, you know, they ate mussels all the time. They ate plants and corn. They were uh, sedentary. They raised, uh, they had, it looked like they had sort of farming techniques. They had, uh, uh, the, the, the ground was um, uh, burnt clay, so they had hard burnt clay floors, and the reason why you would burn the clay was to make it hard so that way you could walk on it. So they had, you know, they laid a hard floor down so that they could walk on it. That's a permanent fucking settlement. That's a permanent fucking settlement at Green River. 
So the historians are lying to all the Kentuckians, but they're white Kentucky who's fucking racist, vote for Mitch McConnell. They don't give a shit, right? I go to the archives here in Breckenridge County, and she's like, I don't give a damn about Native Americans. Two days before Thanksgiving. Why are you being such a racist against Native Americans? What the fuck has Native Americans ever done to that old white woman at the archives? What the fuck did it ever do to her? It didn't do nothing to her, but she's an asshole. So what the fuck does she care? She's a racist, white supremacist, fucking piece of shit asshole. What the fuck does she care? She doesn't. She's a racist. She has no morals or scruples. And she's glad. She took Thanksgiving Day to say, ha, 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 we have the Native American land. It's all ours. And she was championing a guy named Robert Stevens. Um, who, or Richard Stevens, who is the namesake of Stevens Port here in Breckenridge. And he was able to get a, a land track of 100,000 acres for some fucking reason for the Revolutionary War. And Washington only got 5,000 acres. I know I'm only saying only. And Isaac Shelby, the first governor, you know, the, the, the George Washington of Kentucky only got 5,000 um, um, acres of land for his Revolutionary War service. Who the fuck is this Richard Stevens that did, you know, 100,000, five goes into 120 times. So he is 20 times the commander of George Washington and Isaac Shelby. Who the fuck is this Richard Stevens? How did he get a 100,000 acre land track in Kentucky? I bet it has something to do with the land law of Virginia in 1779. There is 21 individuals that got shit ton of fucking land. Somehow they was able to streamline then take land that people have been sitting on and growing their stuff. White people have been sitting on and growing their stuff. And they took it from them. And eventually they had a bunch of wrangling out with the lawyers and shit and the speculators won. But there should be something about homestead and home rights. You sat there. You raised a crop. You built a house. You've been taking care of that land. The people were gone. That shit is yours. But that's not how Kentucky did it. They went ahead and gave it to all these rich fuckers. And how did Richard Stevens get 100,000 acres? Yeah, I'm sure he did some civil or some uh, Revolutionary War service and probably French and Indian War. But even those guys, if you were a captain, you got a larger track, like 5,000 acres. And if you're like a private, you only got about 100 acres or so, which is still a substantial amount. But the, he got 100,000, 100 fucking thousand acres. And this guy is treated as like a celebrity. He's the founder of Breckenridge. It was all because Richard Stevens came marching in here and said, this land should be mine. Even William Hardin's had to fucking settle, you know, create a fort and shit. Had to scope the place out. The place is already established by the time Richard Stevens get here. 100,000 acres. And how many of that acres are the Shawnee? Did he fucking check? Did he do any survey? Did he do any census? I bet he didn't do any of that shit. I bet they killed Native Americans whenever they fucking saw them. So, enough with that tangent. But seriously, Richard Stevens, how's he a fucking hero? Because, I mean, it's good. He's a revolutionary war hero. He fought against the British. But it really wasn't a revolution, right? The Haitian Revolution was a true revolution. The French Revolution was a true revolution. And the American government didn't want shit to do with those revolutions. So they aren't for the people. They don't want the people to get the power, especially slaves, to have a slave rebellion. No way. No way. They had slaves. So they want to maintain slavery, make sure women had no right to vote, make sure uh, white men, if you had no property, you weren't going to be voting either. Anybody under 21, black folks, natives, none of these people could vote. So they went ahead and, you know... Basically, the majority of the country was uh, was pushed out. Now, nah, this revolution is only for rich white men who own property. Sorry, everybody else. You know, I know you might have given some blood up or whatever and maybe been ravaged because of the war, but this war was for us, not y'all. So that's not revolutionary. Revolutionary means you, you, you smash the system and you change it to some other thing. Um, we're not the British Empire anymore, but we're the American Empire who speak English. So we're still English-speaking empire. And in some respects, that's how Germany was formed, because there are similar language structures. So could someday uh, Otto van Bismarck try to bring Great Britain and the United States together and all English-speaking nations and just name it English land? I, maybe one world government, you know, people always cooking up weird-ass schemes and shit. So Captain Pipe, let's just try to stick with Captain Pipe for 10 minutes on this, okay? Because I'm going to title it Captain Pipe, and they're going to get into it. And they was like, you said 23 minutes in, and you haven't said shit about him. All right, Captain Pipe. The reason why I like Captain Pipe is because Simon Gertie fought with him. And so Simon Gertie, he sides with the Native Americans, but the Native Americans would side between the Americans, the British, the French, the Spanish, whoever was on their side at the time. So, you know, the, the empires were using the Native Americans as sort of the pawns. We'll just send the Native Americans out, get them all killed up, and then we'll come out from behind and, you know, we'll say, ah, oh, we got you. 
Um, but the Native Americans, they were trying to use the, the empires, you know, as sort of like the colonists were using, you know, in between France's and Britain's war. France Britain was at war, and that's why the French helped the United States of America win the American Revolution. Most people don't even know that. The French actually came through Kentucky way before any of the Spanish or the English did. The French were the ones that discovered ben, Big Bone Lick. The French were the ones that came down the Ohio and the Mississippi River. The French were the ones that had a trading post at a Skipikithiki. The French were highly embedded in early Kentucky. And you, nobody, there's, there's such a, a void of culture around here. To, to have anybody that spoke French or even likes French culture or anything about the French would be amazing. It would just be like, wait, you know about that? Oh, come on. Uh, you know, even the Spanish and the English, the English uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the adopted culture that we got up. But even then, you know, the honky motherland, who the fuck talks about this shit? We're not from England. We're, we're Americans. We're non-Kentucky Americans. And the same people that say we're Americans are the same Confederate bastards that fucking hated Obama, hated Abraham Lincoln, hated this country, want to fucking secede. You, know, you really love America, don't you? We love so we love America so goddamn much. We're going to declare war for it. We're gonna we're gonna bomb them, and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be America love us then. They sure will. We're gonna keep our slaves. America love or leave it, live or die, die free, simple sci-fi. You ain't even saying anything right now. Well, maybe you're not saying anything right now. My point is that they're terrorists against the fucking you know United States, and then they pretend that they're somehow more patriotic. I got me a Confederate flag because I love this country. They'll wave a Confederate flag and an American flag and not even realize they're being hypocritical fucking douchebags. Hey, hypocrite, you know those two flags were like warring against each other, right? But you're Americans. Okay, Americans. Good job, Americans. Keep on raving, waving your Confederate flag. You got a right to to be a dumbass and wave whatever fucking flag you want to wave. Um, but why, why not wave the Kentucky flag? You know, you want to be different? Nobody waves the Kentucky flag. Why don't you just love your own home state? You try to do that. What are you? Not American, not Indiana, not German. You're fucking Kentuckian. You, can you be Kentuckian or not? Or no, you fuck, fuck Kentucky, right? K fuck Kentucky nationalism. You're, uh, you're, you're a white American, right? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Uh, my point is that we're a bunch of nationalisms, okay? I'm not trying to say it's bad that you say you're American. But if I say, hey, where are you from? Where are your roots from? And you say, Covington? I, I was born in Covington, so that's where I'm from, in northern, northern Kentucky. I came all the way from northern Kentucky. That's where I came from. Well, that's not what the fuck I was asking. <laughs> I, wasn't. Uh, I bet you they put American because they didn't know. They're like, well, goddamn, who the fuck are my roots? Hey, hey, Marsha. Hey, Marsha, what? Where'd I come from? <laughs> You're up. Oh, European. I'm American out of the bathroom, and when I go in the bathroom, uh, European. Or when you're an American, I'm an Amer you're an American. Okay, whatever. I messed I messed it up a little bit, but <laughs> you're not American when you go into the bathroom. You're European. You know, European. That's what you're doing when you go into the bathroom. You're a fucking peeing motherfucker, and that's all you do is pee all over the goddamn place. You a peeing motherfucker. Goddamn European motherfuckers all over the place. Everywhere you look, a bunch of European. Hell, European right here, European over there, European everywhere. Uh oh, just European wherever the fuck you feel like, huh? Okay. Okay, I get you. They don't even know who the fuck they are, so that's why they're like, well, let's uh let's name the countries we can name. There's uh Africa. That's a no, not not a country. Well, um, America, that's the United States of America. No, I'm in America. America? No. America. No A. Just M U R I K A. America. 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 <laughs> I'm gonna have to do the Captain Pipe for the next thing, man. All my fucking pre. No, I'm gonna finish out. All right, Captain Pipe, Captain Pipe, Captain Pipe. Because I also got the Delaware Shawnee breakup and I wanna check out the Duke. All right. So, Captain Pipe. Captain Pipe, Simon Gertie fights with Captain Pipe. Captain Pipe is known for the massacre where he kills um, um, the one man and then eventually it turns into a propaganda piece against Simon Gertie. Okay, so he's got a long life. He does a lot of things. He's a member of the Wolf Clan. He's a Lenape of the Delaware tribe. He speaks Algonquin. He's a chief. He's a warrior. He fought in the French and Indian War, was a part of the American Revolution, couldn't decide which one to go, and then eventually... 
Um, he dies sometime, and nobody knows when he actually died. His son was Captain Pipe, and so there's some discrepancy between him. They don't. His birthday was either 1725 or 1740. His real name was Konis Shikwanohil. So Konis Shikwanohil, very long name, very hard to remember. His nickname was Hopakon, and then they uh, Hopakon means tobacco pipe. And since he was a chief, they just called him Captain Pipe, which actually I think Chief Tobacco Pipe is actually fucking better than than Chief than Captain Pipe. So that's how the British called him was, oh yeah, Captain Pipe. No, it's fucking tobacco pipe. And that's important because there's hemp and tobacco being raised in the United States. The Tuscarora people were known as the hemp peoples. They were known as the hemp peoples. And that was here in the United States, the hemp people. So the chief, chief uh, tobacco pipe. And actually, if I really wanted to be, you know, a loyalist to Native Americans, I would learn his fucking, I learned a Taugayita, which was Johnny Logan's original name, and Kanat Tok Karius, which was, um, uh, George Washington's uh, 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 Iroquois name, which means town destroyer. He just go around burning towns, right? He's not a terrorist. Terrorists are one of those people that, you know, burns towns down and shit. So that's that's somehow that's not. It was it was it was a weird time. The revolution was weird times. You know, it was like the sixties. Things were confusing. Muhammad Ali wanted to be known by Muhammad Ali and uh, fucking Billy fucking Crystal. It was a racist. It was weird times. You know how things are. Captain Pipe. Captain Pipe. Fuck Captain Pipe. I mean, I love Captain Pipe, but fuck that name. Chief Tobacco Pipe. So Chief Tobacco Pipe was a man, you know. He was a man better than uh, um, uh, uh, Daniel Boone, right? So, and, uh, and he's not like Captain Shrimp. And we all know all about Captain Shrimp. I don't even have to tell you. It's Thanksgiving, right? The th Miles Standish, Captain Shrimp. Yeah, okay. So, the maker of daylight is his name, right? So, Kuneshel Kwano Hill, the maker of daylight. That's amazing. What a great fucking name. Who are you? Oh, I'm the one who makes the daylight. Wow, that's really... His public name is Hopakon. And the reason why they only talked about the nicknames and they never said who the, the real name was because they believed that their real name gave spiritual power to their enemies. So, they didn't want to disclose what, you know, the great spirit had bequested upon them uh, to the enemies, and it, there is something to that. A name is very personal type of thing. People get your name, and then they can fuck you over, right? Oh, I got his name. Well, just give me a name, any name, right? Be a name dropper, right? Just, just tell me a name. It doesn't even fucking matter. Drop a name on me. So uh, the reason why is because it could give spiritual power to enemies. In addition, individuals were often given new names, nicknames, different periods in their lives, make uh, particularly to mark life passages, such as reading manhood. We don't have any type of puberty fucking ritual here. Hey, you can get women pregnant now. Let's have a party. Let's have a bar mitzvah. Let's have a kinsin Sarah. Kinsin Sarah. Kinsin Sarah. Kinsin Sarah. Uh, whatever. The, uh, the, the Mexicans and the Jewish people have a, a, a ritual for when men become, you know, when boys become men for that ritual into manhood. And it should be something that should be honored. You are now a man. But there is no rite of passages for young men. They're supposed to be little boys for the rest of their life, right? They're, they're being told what to fucking do. They're being told what to do, told what to do. Women telling them what to do. They're just supposed to be, you know, ignorant ass fucking obedient bitches to men, women, anybody that's just telling them what to do, just do whatever. That one, um, I know I'm going off a little bit of track here, but we're going to get right back on it. But that one, um, uh, uh, Dr. Phil show where the mother, he slaps the mother in the face. The greatest fucking day of my life. That was so fucking great. She was being a fucking dickhead. She was being a fucking dick right to his fucking face. And she eventually said something like, if I tell you what to do or your teachers tell you what to do it, you do it. She goes, he goes, you don't own me. We do own you. We do own, no, you don't fucking own him. That's slavery, you stupid ass piece of shit. Dr. Phil is 100% wrong on that and he was 100% right. If she goes around smacking her kid whenever the fuck she feels like it, he got to do it to her when the cameras were rolling. What's she going to do now? She going to beat the fucking living shit out of him like she gets to do behind closed doors? No. The camera's rolling. She did nothing. She did nothing. Because you ain't allowed to beat the shit out of him. You know, even, and that would have been justified on some level. You could not beat the shit out of him, but like, you know, smack him back or something. But she was being a dick. She was being a fucking jerk. And Dr. Phil was like, well, clearly you shouldn't have done that. She was being a fucking un- compromising asshole trying to smash his soul trying to smash his fucking you know face in and for what 
he was trying to tell her something and she was being a dickhead and so you know they were trying to talk about this thing which she got fucking pissed off about something which he was in the right about but she didn't want to hear about it because she had fucking used violence so he's gonna grow up all traumatized and now dr phil sitting there fucking siding with the damn woman she's a grown-ass fucking woman dr phil and she should know that you shouldn't go around abusing people Catch and release. You don't own your fucking kids. You got to release them out to the public. You got to release them back out to the wild. So, the maker of Daylight. This is uh, Chief Tobacco Pipe. Chief Tobacco Fight. Okay, his name is documented in Colonial Records. The um, Hopacon was born into the wolf clan of his mother. For the Lenape have a matrilineal kinship system of descent and inheritance. A matrilineal kinship means that the... Uh, the name and the honors and the chieftainship and shit goes from the mothers. So it's a matrial, matriarchal society. Usually the women have, there's an elder women troop or whatever, you know, controlling things. Which is different than the Shawnee, but I think it's the same as the Cherokee and the Chickasaw. I think the Cherokee and the Chickasaw are matrilineal. A lot of the Native Americans are matrilineal. So that means, in this system, his mother's eldest brother was a more important in her children's life in the clan than her, their biological father from another clan. So if you're part of the wolf clan and that's your mother, then that means your mother's oldest brother is the most important man in your life, and, and, and even above your biological father who is in another clan. So you're not part of the wolf clan. You're a fucking nobody. Get back into the elk clan. You're part of the elk clan? Well, we don't want to see your face around here. I'm sure it wasn't like that, but... Since you um, get married into the woman's life and since the woman has the kids and that's the matrilineal kinship, that means that her older brothers were more important than the father. And that uh, the uncle served, especially as a male mentor to the boys, bringing them into tribal male society. Little is known of Hopacon's early years. He was probably born near the Susquehanna River in Pennsylvania. His maternal uncle was Chief Custaloga, whom he later succeeded as hereditary chief according to the matrial uh, kinship rules. Captain Pipe likely spent his early years either at Custa Loga's town along French Creek in Mercer County. Okay, some other shit. So he received the public name or a nickname, Hopacon. So Chief Tobacco Pipe, right? Chief Tobacco Pipe was doing this and doing that and just kind of running around, right? Doing the old Delaware Lenape things, you know, how the Lenapes are. Um, and there's actually a lot of really fascinating things that he did. But the, you see, he was with White Eyes. So that's another chief and Kill Buck, which is a really fucking badass fucking name. Oh, Kill Buck. Oh, don't fuck with Kill Bucks. Kill Bucks. They probably killed a buck, right? So uh, Chief uh, Tobacco Pipe, he's going around, you know, thinking about fighting them, thinking about fighting them. Now, something fucked up. The Americans actually killed his mother, his brother, his children, and everybody else, and he still didn't have his mind made up on who he wants to side with, which is amazing. And so maybe the Americans had been so uh, good to him, or the white Americans, the nativists, right? Not the natives, but the nativists, the colonizers. That's weird. American, you call them American revolutionaries, but you don't even, you say they're Native Americans. So really, you probably should say they're like Native Turtle Islanders. So the Native Turtle, Turtle Islanders had to, you know, they're battling the, uh, the Americans. But America, is, it's got a good name today, so it's hard to get away from that. So, uh, I will just say the, the white Americans versus the red-skinned Americans or something. Okay, so we'll, we'll get racist, right? Let's get racist. It was all based upon race anyways, right? The white people thought they was better than the red skin, right? They were savages and shit. So, they started their fucking racism. I'm just coming back and saying, hey, I see you white people. You can't just erase yourself out of history. I'm looking at you whites. And for the whites, that's not a bad thing, just being noticed. You know, you get to fucking be invisible your whole life. No, I see that you're a white person. Hey, white male. How you doing, white man? <laughs> uh, so, the chief tobacco pipe. And other Lenape chiefs agreed, based on the Americans building a fort to protect the Lenape from the British military and European settlers. In response, McIntosh had Fort Lawners built. So, they made a deal, right, with uh, fucking uh, 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 white Americans. And then, as soon as they built the fucking fort, they said, if you don't fight with us, we'll kill you. And when they did that, they were kind of like, ah, we ain't going to fucking play this game. So Chief Tobacco Pipe eventually found some uh, British allies and some of their Native American allies. Really, it's Native American allies, right? The British only fucking tag in along with them. They're just defending their fucking homeland. Um, they departed from the Tuscaroras area and reloaded, located to the Wahonig River. So the Tuscaroras, which were known as the Hemp Peoples, 
He's name his name is Chief Tobacco Pipe. It could have been hip pipe. He could have been smoking, you know, marijuana from a long ass time ago. So cool. Chief Tobacco Pipe was Chief Tobacco Pipe, that's paraphernalia, right? So Chief fucking paraphernalia, Chief fucking marijuana. So old Chief Marijuana is going around and um eventually gets his entire family killed and um the village is known as Pipestown, which is named after him. They said it's uh near the Sandusky River, uh on the Timmos Timokti the Timokti Creek. Wyandotte County, right? Clearly named after the Wyandots. Now here's the uh expedition that you want to know. So the takeaway from this fifty minute lesson, um hopefully there are some laughs. Hopefully you had a good time. As much as much fun as I did. But the the, the, the chief takeaway is that Chief Tobacco Pipe had fought against William Crawford. So Simon Gurdy, the white man who deflected from the Americans to the British, away from the British to the Native Americans, and then back to the British sort of intermittently, he was fighting under Captain Pipe. So you want to say he's British? Fuck you. He's fighting with fucking Captain Tobacco Pipe. Why is he Why is he fighting with Chief Tobacco Pipe if he's fucking British? Don't let me tell me Simon Gurdy's fucking British. I don't want to fucking hear it. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. Simon Gertie was a Native American ally, and just like the Native American allies, they had to side with whatever fucking people was uh, siding with them. The British were helping Tecumseh in the War of 1812, but Tecumseh gets fucking killed, you know? So that was all a bunch of Kentuckians. That was Isaac Shelby and the fucking Kentuckians, right? Andrew Jackson. War of, uh, War of 1812, when the great continent, the great state of the United States of America said, Look at Canada! Let's take them by force. And then they all died. And they was like, all right, it's really cold up there. So um, let's just, we got Kentucky. You know, let's just, let's just keep this here. Wait, we don't have Kentucky. My land grant isn't no good. It went to the speculators. Old Richard fucking, um, Richard fucking Stevens. He went ahead and took my fucking land while I was fucking battling out there. What kind of fucking bullshit is that? Whatever. Just give me a land grant out in Indiana. You'll never hear from me again. Peace. See ya. <laughs> so the Crawford expedition, headed by William Crawford, this is big propaganda for Simon Gurdy because he's, you know, he's a white man who deflected. Well, that's horrible. If it was a lowly sort of private, they could get away with it. But he was known. He was in the middle of a lot of these uh, translation deals. He was over at the Battle Point Pleasant and, you know, was fighting with the British over there. And then he was in Detroit and um, Pennsylvania, you know, up in those forts fighting with the Americans. So he was like a, a big interpreter. He had been kidnapped by the Seneca. He learned some Native American languages. So he was a pivotal interpreter in these uh, negotiations and treaty meetings. So him deflecting was a huge blow, not just sort of to the company or whatever. I mean, he's only one man, right? But it was a sort of blow to the uh, mentality. Like, what the fuck? He just went and sided with the Native Americans. He said, fuck this shit, boys, I'm going home. And he become engine. They said he went on. He went full engine. So he grew up with the Seneca. His father and stepfather got burned at the stake. He watched it and shit. And so, you know, it, uh, there's got to be a weird psychology thing. That's got to be really, you know, traumatized. And you'll never forget that shit. But you're also seeing, you know, that's like the worst way to die in the fucking world. And if that's the end of your life, you, you know, you might, you, you might hate the atrocity of it. But at the same time, you might also hate the weakness of the person being born, uh, being burned. Why did you allow yourself to get burned like that? You know, that's like a really horrible death. And um, so Simon Gertie, uh, a loyalist and interpreter, to shoot him. So William Crawford, like, killed a bunch of people. The the Nodden Hutton massacre, he just killed a whole bunch of, he killed 100 Lenape, right? So the Lenape were murdered by William Crawford. So they went ahead and marked Crawford for dead. They captured him, they painted his face fucking black, and then they had a ritual torture of him. And then they, um, Simon Gertie gets uh, uh, the bad rap of this because he was just there. And so they want to make this fucking seem worse. Now, William Crawford was doing an expedition, right? The uh, um, Captain Tobacco Pipe helped defeat the Crawford expedition. The expedition means they were going somewhere. They were, you know, that expedition is a trail. You're on a campaign. So the expedition, he was killing people. He was on a campaign, a military campaign, like the March to the River with uh, uh, William Tecumseh Sherman. So William Crawford, he's at the Crawford Expedition killing anybody, killed everybody, killed 100 Lenape, killed some Germans at the Newton Hutton uh, Massacre, some of the, uh, I think they're actually Christian Indians or something, Christian Native Americans, so just a massacre, just killing innocent people for the fuck of it, for a laugh, right? So it's actually weird propaganda, because this psycho motherfucker is just murdering, you know, willy-nilly and shit, 
And then when the uh, finally the Lenape catch a hold of William Crawford and they're torturing him. Now the the thing is Simon Gurdy was laughing. He thought it was hilarious. He was just laughing at you know William Crawford being killed. That possibly that could be a possible thing. They some of the survivors said that he was just uh, laughing. Others say right here on the bottom that they criticized by the American survivors for letting Crawford be tortured. Hey, you know, Simon Gurdy shouldn't have let him be tortured. And then there, I've seen another thing where they tried to threaten him. They were sitting there saying, Gurdy, if you don't let us torture him, we'll shoot you. And so then it actually says it right here. The soldier begged, uh, oh, no, they, they begged Simon Gurdy to shoot him. But I read in another one, here's a picture of Hopo Khan. Oh, Chief Tobacco Pipe. Chief Tobacco Pipe, you come from the Tuscola lands where they raise hemp. And other stuff, maybe we. Captain Pipe is the leader of the Delaware Natives during and after the American Revolution. Little is known of his early years. His Native American name was Konesha Kualo Hill, meaning maker of light. Wait, I thought it was maker of daylight. Well, all right, maker of light then. Not daylight, maybe night light or something. His nickname amongst the uh, Lenape was Hopacon. Translate tobacco pipe. So. We'll get to the, in 1782, participated in William Crawford's defeat, seeking vengeance for the Naden Hutton massacre. Captain Pipe is probably the one who marked Crawford for death by painting his face black. He also threatened to kill Simon Gurdy if he tried to intercede on Crawford's behalf when the natives first tortured him and executed him. So that's a different story. That's saying that, uh, uh, Captain, that he tried to, you know, intervene because actually Simon Gurdy saved fucking Simon Kitten a couple fucking times. Simon Kitten had to run the gauntlet like about four or five times or some shit. Fucking strong ass savage bastard, Simon Kitten. I, I I got some respect for him, but he was a savage motherfucker. Um, and uh, Simon uh, uh Gertie and Simon Kitten were like blood brothers and shit. So that that's probably why he fucking helped him out. But Simon Kitten, he um he was a genocider, right? Took fucking Native American land, sort of like Daniel Boone. So Simon Gertie, if you want to talk about a purist, a white person who fought on the Native American side, a purist, a leader, somebody that was well known. There's a couple, you know, there's actually lots of whites that got kidnapped and were adopted into it, but you never hear about them later on. Um, there were some brothers, the Stewart brothers or something, um, at the, uh, uh, the, the attack on Morgan Station, um, which is like the final attack, the last raid in the Kentucky, the attack on Morgan Station. There are some white brothers that have fought each other. They actually, I think one killed the other too or some weird shit. So... There's lots of white people that was, you know, fought with the Native Americans because they're captured because of their conscience, whatever reason. Um, Daniel Boone almost looked like he about chose to become a Shawnee warrior because he was just kind of sick of how the fucking whites dealt with shit. And then they kicked him out of fucking Kentucky. So, you know, thanks a lot, Daniel Boone, but no thanks. Get the fuck out of here. And then Daniel Boone goes and takes a better job in Illinois or Indiana, just a fucking judge. And they said, deal with these fucking cases as you see fit. Gives them unlimited power and shit. And nobody was bitching like they was doing in Kentucky. You didn't survey my land right. It's all your fault. And he just, every fucking day, you know, he almost made it a game to where he didn't want to fucking go. And I'm not going to town today. Nah, we'll see. They'll just bitch about this and that. What the fuck? So they threatened to kill Gertie if he tried to intercede, which is weird because it's the whole tribe versus Gertie. So it doesn't sound like Gertie would be like, no, don't kill Crawford. Um, but maybe it might be to save Gertie's, you know, his, him laughing. <laughs> and actually, I shouldn't have closed out of that. Well, well, <laughs> uh, here's another thing for the Crawford. Says that, uh, uh, you know, old Chief Tobacco Pipe in 1782 is captured Colonel Crawford, who was held responsible for the murders of Chief Logan's family. Get the fuck out of here. All right, so let's see. Um, he gets killed. All oh, his, his family got killed. I totally forgot. Oh, yeah, so in 1778, General Edward Hand of the American Colonial Forces killed Captain Pipe's mother, brother, and some of his children. So not only did they do that, but this fucking um, Colonel Crawford, he was one that was responsible for for motherfucking Chief Logan's family. Chief Logan's the one that started the American Revolution. The 1774 Battle of Point Pleasant was where the British, including fucking Daniel Boone and all the fucking and so-called Americans that's going to eventually deflect Lord Dunmar, were fighting for the British to go after the Shawnee. And they were doing it because of the massacre that happened on Yellow Creek. The massacre of Yellow Creek was where they tricked Johnny Logan's family and killed his whole family while they were drunk. And they set their guns down. They killed them all. Massacre. Fucking bloodshed, killed babies, killed women, killed everybody, didn't give a fuck. 
and left Johnny Logan by himself with no fucking family, nobody, whatsoever. fucking ever. And he just went on a rampage saying, fuck it, you know, there's an Indian tradition. I don't know about your damn treaties and all your fucking little signing little parties and shit, but there's a tradition that if you kill one of mine, then I get to kill one of yours. And, that, you know, tit for tat, you've wiped out my entire fucking family, so I get to kill, I don't know, probably infinite, right? So he just starts attacking village after village after village till eventually it alarms Lord Dunmar, which is the governor of Virginia, and then he starts the American Revolution at the Battle of Point Pleasant. They call it Lord Dunmar's War. Um, because it happened a year or so before the Declaration happened. But 1774 was also when Na Massachusetts was kicking out the British. So Massachusetts was kicking the British out then. And then in um, Lord Dunmar's War, you have, um, you know, that was the British. That was the British who was uh, had all these fucking American colonialists. So Massachusetts was going through their own revolutionary fervor. And they was able to get kick the British out of Boston, um, the capital of Massachusetts at the time. Uh, 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 but meantime, you've got the British and all these, you know, later on to be Mar Americans, maybe, we don't ever know. Daniel Boone got fucking, you know, uh, court-martialed or whatever, saying that he was British. He tried to sell out all those salt makers. Um, but the uh, Captain Pipe, uh, Chief Tobacco Pipe, he is, um, you know, he got his entire family fucking killed by General Edward Hand. And then Colonel Crawford, who's leading an expedition, killing towns to towns, killed all of Chief Logan's fucking family, you know. Killed lots of fucking people, and then they want to say, well, Simon Gertie, how barbaric. He was laughing when they burned Colonel Crawford on the stake. Colonel Crawford was a fucking genocidal fucking psycho massacre. What the fuck? They killed Johnny Logan's entire fucking family for doing nothing. They tricked him. They got him drunk. They took their fucking guns, and they tricked him. Does that sound good to you? Does that sound right to you? Doesn't sound good to me. Doesn't sound right to me, because it's not right. It's very wrong. Very, very, very wrong, okay? So, in 18, 1782, Captain Pipe and his people captured Colonel Crawford. And, uh, okay, yeah, so we went ahead and read that part. And that's, um, that's pretty much, that's, that's the end of old, um, Chief, Chief, um, not Wamsetta. Chief, um, yeah, I'm even, Tobacco Pipe, that's still English, I'm still an Anglifying it, right? Hope we can. It's easier to remember. I should remember Konish Quano Hill. So Konish Quano Hill. Oh, Konish Quano Hill. Oh, Hope I can. It's easier to remember. Old Hope I can. Still for three or four syllables, you know, like your your nickname Fritz. That's 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 a nice little nickname, right? Fritz. So, and then more things happen. So, Captain Pipe, his main connection that I know about him is that Simon Gertie fought with him when they burned Colonel Crawford at the stake. They burned Colonel Crawford at the stake. Captain Pipe was there, and um, and Simon Gertie was there too. So, maybe I can analyze their friendship and how long that they fought together with each other. I know at the Battle of Blue Licks there was Delaware, so I'm not for sure if uh, um, uh, um, Chief Tobacco Pipe was there or not. But Chief Tobacco Pipe goes everywhere, right? Chief Hobokan, Chief Tobacco Pipe. Man, Captain Pipe is going to fucking stick in it. That's fucking bullshit because that's the enemy's name for him. It's like the Winnebago's. That's not their fucking name. Um, there's some other ones that are like that too. Yeah, uh, King Philip. That's not his fucking name. King Philip is Metacomet. Chief Metacomet. Learn Metacomet's name. Don't fucking say King Philip's War. There's no such thing as King fucking Philip. They said that the English gave them English names and shit and that they had fucking changed it. I don't believe you. I don't fucking believe you. I don't know. If they did, that's possible. But uh, Chief Metacomet, that's, that was his name. Then they started warring against each other. I doubt if I, I go to France and I say, from now on, I want to be known as, um, I don't know, some French word, bonjour. I think Bonsoir is like hello or something. But Bonsoir is my name. My name is Bonsoir. And then the French started killing me. I doubt if I'd be like, well, yeah, go along with the old Bonsoir. No, Johnny Masters, motherfucker. I'm fucking uh, Crazy Blackheart. Chief Crazy Blackheart. Duke of Cumberland. <laughs> okay, so.
Captain Pipe is 48 years old. Some other things about Captain Pipe, Chief Tobacco Pipe, the uh, relationship. I don't know how long they actually were. Simon, Gertie, and him were fighting, but they did fight together. So, you know, was uh, old uh, uh, Chief Tobacco fight fighting for Simon, Gertie, and the British? Or was he fighting for himself and his own land? I would say he's fighting for his own land. The Lenape are also called Delaware Indians. Historical territory flanking the Delaware River watershed, the western Long Island, and the lower Hudson Valley. Lenape kinship system has matrilineal clans. The children belong to their mother's clan from which they gain social status and identity. The mother's eldest brother is more significant as a mentor to the male children than their father, who is of another clan. Hereditary leadership passed through the maternal line and women, woman elders could remove leaders of whom they disapprove. So for him to be a Lenape, that means the women actually chose Chief Tobacco Pipe to be the man. Hey, Chief Tobacco Pipe, you be the man, I'll be the man. All right, mama. All right, grandmama. Grandmothers. Grandmothers and mothers. Everybody listen to me. I will be your chief. Families were matrilocal. Oh, they matrilocal. Newlywed couples would live with the bride's family where her mother and sisters could also assist her with their growing family. So, you want to know about the financiables, huh? There you see it. You done see it. So, Kilbuck, also named as Galili Men, or John Kilbuck Jr. <laughs> uh, so, Kilbuck is, he's got a fucking father named Kilbuck also. How can you be fucking, you gotta have, right? There's gotta be a fucking father, right? There's gotta be, what the fuck? So he was. This was just a a, a, a Lenape war chief that was hanging out with uh, Chief Tobacco Pipe. It said they supported the rebel Americans. So actually, he would have been on the opposite side. So, but he was at like some fucking subtle thing, uh, signature thing. His name signifies leader, born into the senior Turtle Clan, who had the responsibility to lead the tribe and become principal chief of the Lenape in November 1778, following the death of White Eyes, a war chief and speaker of the Delaware Head Council, Galili Men. Succeed his maternal grandfather, Netawatwees. 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 And of course, Netawatwees was the great Lenape war chief of the, um, also of the Turtle Clan. The Turtle Clan was the number one clan when it comes to, maybe that's what it was. The Lenapes were following a bunch of turtles and not the wolves. Not the Captain Tobacco Pipe wolves. The Wolf Clan was such a stronger clan, better clan, smelled better. Everything was better about them in every which way. Skill Advisor appears on the Colonial Records as Natawatwees. <laughs> the Turtle Subtribe. Delaware, no, Lenape. Come on now. White Eyes, also named Coquethagetchton. Coquette Hodge Getston, leader of the Lenape people in Ohio County during the era. And actually, when you say their name, Coquette Hodge Getston, Coquette Hodge Getston, that, that name now will live forever. Or to the earth, it, it, I brought it back up. So every time you say Jonathan Daniel Masters, Gripshover, uh, Crazy Blackheart, um, Revolutionary Extraordinaire, you're actually, you're, to the earth, I'm alive. So if you just keep saying it over and over again. So, what was that fight club thing? In death, he has a life. In life, we have no name. But in death, Robert Paulson, right? His name was Robert Paul. His name was Johnny Masters. His name was Johnny Masters. His name was Jonathan Masters. Jonathan Daniel Masters. Gripshover, the fourth. 14th, Jonathan Daniel Masters grouped over the 14th of the, of the Wolf and Panther tribe, of the Wolf and Panther tribe, of the Ferdinand and Bernhardt ancestry. <laughs> so White Eyes, sometimes known as George White Eyes, or Captain Gray Eyes, or Sir William, right? What the fuck ever, English just like to fuck up. Oh wait, your name is Coqueta Hetchington? Uh, what about George? You can we just go along with George? That was us. And then um, uh, uh, Chief Tobacco Pipe. We just saw another one. Oh yeah, Sir William, William fucking whatever, <laughs> Junior. They said his name was something Junior. 
Um, shit, I just had the fucker's name too. A uh, kill buck. Oh, kill buck. Is that because you kill a lot of bucks? Well, kill buck. That's a badass name. It kind of kind of gives me chills when you say it. Could you just go with John Killbuck Jr.? That that sounds less frightening. Oh my God, it's Killbuck. What the fuck have we done? Killbuck is on his way. No, no, no. It's it's John Killbuck Jr. Oh. Oh, well, shit. Oh, uh, well, we'll just go back planting some roses. So, old white eyes. He was murdered with by American military covered up by the American officials. Wow. Assassinated, covered up by the American officials. Who were assassinated? We've had several Shawnee who were assassinated. Can you name them? I'll name them for you. So, the ones who were assassinated, uh, Maluntha and Cornstalk. They murdered the motherfuckers. That, that this wasn't just a peace uh, emissary or whatever. It was actual. Hey, let's have a discussion. And since you're over here, we've captured you. Fuck you. So they weren't being respectful. They weren't playing by any type of fucking rules and shit. It was made smart for Massasoit to come up with ninety Wampanoags when he met up with goddamn fucking pilgrims. Oh, what pilgrims? You want to meet up with the leader? Well, how about you meet up with my entire fucking tribe? No, the entire fucking turtle fucking wolf clan, motherfucker. Now the whole turtle clan's here. How do you like us now? How do you like us now? Now that we're on our way. Used to think you're crazy. Stand here today. Couldn't make you love me. Always dreamed about. Living in your radio. How do you like me now? How do you like me now? <laughs> um, so that's all about Captain Pike. That is everything you'll ever need to know about Captain Pipe. Actually, very little information was imparted about it. You probably would have done better if you would have just read it yourself. Custaloga was, he was preceded by him. The Wolf Clan, they have a whole, like, fucking thing about the Wolf Clan. So the Lenape and the Wolf Clan was a big thing. The Shawnee had their own sort of, I think they had Wolf Clan too, but it was the Shawnee Wolf Clan, right? And then, so they only named, like, they got Captain Pipe the Younger, and then they got Hawking Pomska. And then Custaloga. So Custaloga was the one that had got the name, you know, got the, the captainship, the captainship, listen to me, the chieftainship. Um, and they got it through his mother, right? So it's matrilineal. Little is known by the early life of Custaloga, of course. He's also known as Pekanke. So old Pekanke. Something, George Washington's journal, 21-year-old Washington, arrived at Fort Machalt in the village of Venango. And Custaloga was in charge of the wampum of his nation under Chief Shingas. It says Custaloga had aided Pontiac in his rebellion. The white settlers were wary of his actions. They asked Gayusuta of the Seneca to live amongst the people at Custaloga's town to watch or maintain a watchful eye on Chief Custaloga. The Seneca, one of the six nations of the Iroquois Confederacy, were powerful by this time. The Confederacy seemed to believe that they had a kind of overlordship over the Delaware. All right. So the Iroquois thought they controlled the Delaware. Delaware, the grandfather of Shawnee. Poor Shawnee, man. They they were fucking destined to be independent, individualist, fucking, you know, badass warriors. The only other, the, the Pawnee are spoken of as fucking terrifying warriors. Chief Doublehead liked to eat white people, so he actually would eat them, right? So he was, um, he's notable. That's Cherokee. And the Yuchi. The Yuchi were known to be as badass fucking warriors. The Shawnee were badass warriors. Never relented. Never give up, right? Tecumseh. They fought the longest, right? The tribe that fought the longest and most vigilantly. And um, and they were good, man. They were good, too, because they could break down the whole fucking village and then go live elsewhere. And it sucked to have to do that type of shit, but that's how mobile they were. That's how they were that mobile in their lives. You know, if you used to go into an American town, they would, everybody would just be sleeping. You would just, you would just get them right. So that was um, for uh, uh, for the Native Americans. It was something different. They was ready and alert at all fucking times and ready to pack up. Oh, we know that they're coming over here. Well, let's just pack up and you know go out into the woods for a while. And then they would burn the cornfields and the, all the fucking shit that they left over and shit like a bunch of fucking lunatics. That's George Rogers Clark. We got a county named Clark County, right? Right on top of the Skippy Kitty Key. Where's the Skippy Kitty Key? Nobody knows. The last Shawnee village. Nobody knows. Probably fucking white people that fucking killed everybody and burned their village down. And then named it after George Rogers Clark, the great Indian genocider. Hey, the great old Indian. And then that's actually most 120 counties in Kentucky. 
you had 20 of them named after those who died in the War of 1812, right? At the Battle of fucking River Raisin, the Battle of Frenchtown. And so they died because they were fucking killing Native Americans. They had like probably about 15 tribes they were shooting at at the Battle of Frenchtown. The British, no, there's 15 Native Americans. Why the fuck were you going all the way to Frenchtown? Why were you all the way up in Detroit? Because you're trying to take fucking Canada. You marched all the way from Kentucky all the way up to Detroit and then got slaughtered. And then wondered why. And then remember the River Raisin. Remember the massacre. What do you mean remember the massacre? You went up there to invade another fucking, you know, a, a fucking sovereign fucking nation. Who the fuck are you to be doing that shit? It's not your fucking state. Ohio. Ohio was, this is all Shawnee territory, right? It was an expansionist, imperialist. And then once everybody died, let's name a county after them. So, you know, I think that was just to keep morale up. Like, holy shit, all those Kentuckians just got massacred. I don't know if I want to join the War of 1812. Fuck Henry Clay. Fucking Henry Clay being all about the four fucking War of 1812 like it's the goddamn fucking the greatest thing in the world. I bet he's going to be against the Mexican War here in a couple of years. Against the Mexican War, for War of 1812. Make up your fucking mind, man. You don't want to take Mexico, but you did want to take Canada. What the what changed? Where's your change of heart there? You know, you make no damn sense. At least be consistent. All the great compromiser, the great pacific pacifizer. I got you. So you're a compromise. You'd have no morality. You have no fucking fun of morality, do you, Henry Clay? Fucking Henry Clay. Don't even get me started with that motherfucker. That aristocratic fucking politician. Fucking Henry Clay. Oh, yeah, Henry Clay is so great. Colonization, great fucking idea, right? He's against slavery. Bullshit. Never was he against slavery. He was only for colonization. Never would give him freedom. Emancipation Proclamation, never would have been pinned by no fucking Henry fucking Clay. Uh, don't even bring up Henry fucking Clay, that dirty, rotten son of a bitch. The great compromiser. That's what he's known for. Hey, Mr. Have No Fucking Morals. Hey, Mr. Compromise your values. Hey, mister, don't stand for nothing, not a goddamn thing. Flip-flopping, speaking out both sides of your mouth, fucking immoral son of a bitch. Fuck Henry Clay.